All right, y'all, I'm super pumped about today's video. Today, we're going to be continuing in our series on troubleshooting garbage disposals. Now, this is part two. At the end of this series, I'm going to put it all together in one video. Remember, never repeat anything in these videos. Just use them for educational purposes only. We're going to be going through some of the practical things that you can start looking for when you're troubleshooting if your garbage disposal is acting funny or you know it's just not working at all. So before we get started today, if you want to do me a personal favor and hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, and hit the notification bell button, and you can join us every day at 1030 for the pro tip of the day. Let's get to it. All right, y'all, I'm super excited about jumping into this. Remember, never repeat anything in these videos, just use them for educational purposes only. So I'm going to walk you through if I were to get a call and somebody's garbage disposal was not working. The first thing I'm going to check is some of them have a reset button on the bottom, okay? I'm going to make sure the switch is off, and I'm going to check and see if there is a reset button either on the side or on the bottom. Sometimes it's just got a reset button. It needs to be reset. Okay, let's assume we've done that and we still have no power. The first thing I'm going to try is just the switch to see if the switch receptacle is working at all. I'm gonna try it with the device plugged in and hitting the reset button first, if there is a reset button. Then what I'm going to do is I am going to check and see, and I'm going to try and see if the switch is working. Okay, if the switch is not working, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to unplug the disposal. And I'm gonna plug in something like this. Now this is your standard plug tester. This is not an electrical meter. This is only a plug tester. This is going to give us kind of just a preliminary check, okay? And I'm going to check the top and bottom receptacles here in a moment when I get ready to test it. So once I plug that in, I'm going to try the switch again, okay? When I try the switch again, if it shows me something like this, then there's really only going to be one of two problems unless we're in the twilight zone. So first, let's talk about non-twilight zone situations. If you're not familiar with that term, that means way out there problems because sometimes you get an electrical and the problems are just unexplainable. But first, let's talk about the normal. If I were to come to someone's house, I put my plug tester in, I flip the switch and I got two yellow lights, which means correct wiring. The odds are it's either a bad disposal or a bad connection in the underside of the disposal. So that cord is going to whip underneath to a junction box. In that junction box, there's going to be wire nutted connections. There's a chance that one of those are loose or a bad connection. So with the machine unplugged, I could open that up and I could check those connections and then potentially, while the switch is off, plug it back in and then turn the water on it and test it. Okay. If that didn't work, likely the disposal is bad. Now, let's talk about real quick, without getting out in the weeds, some twilight zone situations you could run into. Let's say you plug this in and you do show correct wiring on the plug tester, but it still doesn't work. One thing that you could do is pull an extension cord temporarily from a different circuit over to the disposal and see if it worked when you plugged it in. If it did, then there's a chance, even though this receptacle reads good wiring, there is still a chance that when you put a load on it, it's broken on the inside or the neutral drops out and there's a chance that it won't work even though it shows correct wiring. But that would kind of be last case scenario, okay? Uh, but before I threw the disposal out, I might pull an extension cord over in a GFCI, you know, protected receptacle, plug it in, okay, and then see if it worked. And that would be kind of like my final check. Um, but if it was old and decrepit, I would probably just call it old and just throw it away, okay? So with that being said, that's one way to troubleshoot it. Let's go ahead and look at another one. Let's say you plug your plug tester in and it shows you an error code, okay? That means one of a couple of things, okay? It could mean that there's power there, or it does mean that there's power there, but there's something wrong with the circuit. So these receptacles show, or these plug testers, when you plug them into a receptacle, they show you error codes, don't they? So it could be a dropped neutral. It could be showing hot and ground reversal. It could be showing multiple things which could lead to several different scenarios. We could have a loose neutral at the receptacle. We could have a loose hot at the receptacle. We could have a loose ground at the receptacle. We could have a loose neutral at the panel. We could have a uh, loose neutral and we could have a bad switch. We could just have a bad switch. Poss we possibly could have a bad switch and we possibly could have a bad receptacle. And that's where we're going to stop for today before we start getting into some of the other problems tomorrow. So one, if this were the case and I was either reading an error code or um, I was reading something that I felt like I had a bad neutral, I would start with first replacing the receptacle up to code, okay? Then I would replace the switch up to code, and I would test them one at a time. First, I would replace the receptacle. 
boom. Okay, that fixed my problem. I'm done. Okay. And then if that didn't work, if I replaced the receptacle, I would go and I would replace the switch. Now, this is after doing some troubleshooting that I can't explain to you, um, you know, really because it just goes farther into the scope. I may go to the panel first. Likely, though, if I'm showing an error code or something's broken on the receptacle, the face receptacle, likely the first thing I'm going to do is replace the receptacle. You can have a bad connection inside that receptacle or something comes loose or the receptacles just burn out. So I'm probably going to replace the receptacle first. After I do some other troubleshooting, which would include um, turning the breaker on and off, checking things, I would check with my voltmeter perhaps. But this will get you in the right direction, and then you just start replacing the components one at, one at a time. Okay, start with the receptacle. If that doesn't fix it, you could go to the switch. If you're showing an error code, it's likely not going to be the switch. It's likely going to be something back at the panel. And remember, never get in the panel unless you can do it legally, morally, and ethically. And I highly recommend working with an electrical inspector if you need to in your area. And when in doubt, call a licensed professional. Never work in an energized panel. Never work on an energized circuit. So I am the electrical DIY coach. We're going to dive farther into tomorrow of some of the common problems that we see when we go out and tr uh, troubleshoot disposals. Let's go ahead and get to it.